The first part of this is really just a, um, a little bit of a, um, uh, a few thoughts that are, uh, if I were working on my paper in the 2010 volume, uh, where I might take it. And uh, so you know my, uh, I'm sure you're familiar with my position about ancient antiquity of of not an A in North America and an early branching of the EAC and the Tlingit down to the coastal areas or near the coastal areas very early. So this particular timeline and map, there's a lot that, that can be said about it, but basically I'm talking about a slow chronology for not an A in North America. And this would be, uh, say, proto not an A or talking about Yen is saying at 14,000 years, a common Dene Yen is saying. And uh, all I have to do to make that work with most of the material is have Tlingit and Eak break off pretty early. And there is a long continuous occupation of most of the northwestern section of the northern Athabascan area by uh, Athabascan, but in very small, small populations. So there's a band here, a band there. It's not a matter of a continuous uh, 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 occupation, I mean, a, a widespread occupation of the total area. So um, uh, when you look at, uh, this is the place names, a scatter plot for uh, this language right here in Fairbanks. Uh, lower Tanana. Uh, if you just look at all the place names, there are no alien language elements among the place names. But, uh, and so we talk about this lack of substrata in many of the Alaskan uh, Athabascan language areas. That's not true for all northern Athabascan. I think with Suatain, where Sharon is the expert there. I mean, there's some real interesting stuff floating around in the Wasuita lexicon that are not necessarily directly related to Simshianic and High Slope, but that's down in central, uh, coastal, northern uh, British Columbia. Uh, but the lack of substrata versus substrata in Anna Berge's talk today in Aleut, that'll form some point of comparison, but there you're talking about the coastal zone. So uh, uh, a month or so ago, I gave a presentation in the anthropology department, and I talked about this, uh, these sets of names. But you have to look at the Athabascan geography as being so totally organized and informative. And here is a case where the Adi, uh, one uh, cardinal element in the name appears in eight names, and you could just simply say the geography is named by the way it looks. And it's amazing. It's amazing. It's memorizable. A 10 or 12 year old can memorize it, and that's when they used to memorize it. Um, now, in many of our presentations or uh, in, in our discussions, Ed and I, we, we're looking for data sources, and so this is readily available. Uh, to him uh, and, and others uh, when he wants to dig around for something to compare it with Ket. And this is the high frequency terms in the lower Tanana geography and really every one of these could be reconstructed for Proto-Athabascan. Maybe the word for slew is a bit of an innovation, but we see what all the pieces are in the word for slew. And, um, this continues, and then the group E is the fabulous directional system, which I think Ed is going to bring up a little bit. Are you going to get into that today, Ed? Yeah, but this is very juicy. And um, it's a nine-part system, but all nine uh, concepts interact with each other. It, it is a complete uh, uh, it's a novahedron, you know, a nine-pointed reshaped thing of nine points. And um, so if I were going to try to, and, and Ben and I, you know, actually I was Ben's landlord for about four years. Uh, <laughs> and uh, 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 if we we're going to talk about things like this, this would be uh, not necessarily looking to the east of Alaska, but I think the earliest Athabascan bands would be uh, the ones in the uh, in the Tanana River, 
in the, in, the, in the section where all the sites are, the old sites. And um, I would say that a second movement would be down near the confluence of the Tanana and the Yukon. And I would say a third one is into the Copper River, probably having something to do with the breaching of Lake Otna, which uh, I saw a master's student uh, thesis say it was something like 10,570 years ago, or some very, 72 years ago or something, is very precisely dated. But we're, we, we have to realize that's a sockeye stream, and the sockeyes are going to be colonizing the Copper River. Um, the bats antenna in number four, uh, you want to uh, think about the Koyukuk and some of this uh, enticing things about uh, obsidian from there showing up on the Tanana River very early. And the one I've been thinking about the most lately is five, and that would be a proto Denina area, and we know the place name of that area, and the role of that place name in Denina lore is very significant, Hatsainen. And I could get to the bullet points on that, but I'm not going to uh, today. But uh, there, there are very few parts of, of Alaska and Athabasca, and you'd say would have a proto area for it. But Denina seems to have been autonomous enough geographically for a long enough time, and then you see the infiltration throughout Cook Inlet. So that, that there is a good argument for there having been a separate, uh, at some distance. So, uh, if any of you are familiar with these two articles I did in 1996 on the hydronymic districts, but we have not here, just like in China, is Chenat in, in, um, in, in Western Alaska, or Talkeetna is Kdalkeetno in Denina, but that's related to not. And above uh, Beaver on the Yukon River, and above um, the Delta River and the Goodpaster River, on the Tanana River, the hydronyms change. And there's something very interesting to this, I think it's very ancient. And here's something, I doctored up a map from my 1996 article, and I haven't really ever elaborated, I just wrote about a, two paragraphs on this thing. But um, I, uh, uh, there, there, this is the not Nika shift in hydronyms. And there is a reversal. There's a reversal of the Nika being used downriver and the not being used upriver. And uh, I was counting these, and the only one that I found since the article came out is for the North Fork of the Koyukuk River. Couldn't be better. That's called Tlakos Nika in, in Koyukon. So that's the name for. Uh, the North Fork of the Koyukuk River. I think the two most significant ones are the North Fork of the Koyukuk and the Kuskokwim, where this is Ditch and Nanika, whereas all the other streams around there are not these ones they highlight. So this is Avenue, Street, 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 Avenue, conceptually, but it's very profound. And, uh, and I know I was on to this even the first time I recorded the name for Malchotna River and Hook Creek, which are over in the Denina area, they say Vashchotnak, and they say Tashchotnak. And that's Nik, but they're kind of mixing it with Nak, and they got a Q apostrophe on it. And there seems to be a founder, you know, you talk about a founder, founder <coughs> effect, a linguistic founder effect that these naming of these streams, and if you're starting in the Nana, in the Teklanika is one of them. It's Tacha Van Nika. And you look at the Nika, 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 and they're, you know, a couple days apart. And on my little uh, uh, marker in my, uh, what you call a topo program, it's about 480 miles, say, from the Nana down to Chtsainen. Uh, that's the founding of the sign and band, uh, uh, unequivocally. And um, so um, here's something, this is my footnote on page 216. My, I sort of cherry picked the archaeology that I can understand or that I can digest. And, and this, uh, this is a thing. Uh, this, I believe you'd call this a northern archaics 
site in the Southern Brooks Range, but for a 500 to 7 year period, there were um, these 55 tent rings are being used recurrently, but the average is once every 40 years. So you imagine a, a 50 year old person leading that party, and that's Athabascan for you. And uh, I'm going to turn this over to Sharon at this point. I just wanted to keep this brief. Maybe we'll have a little extra time, but this is my foot, or Ed's footnote, but we talked about this, and this incorporate slot has, and for all these thinking and forgetting and remembering and being absent-minded and forgetful in, in Ket, and, and it is well known in, in the Athabascan languages as mind and thought, so it does appear that mind and thought are cognate in Dene and Asayan. This is not everybody here is a linguist. I thought I would just review a little bit about what incorporation is. Um, so this is from a survey article by Donna Gertz. It's a lot like compounding. So if you think of a compound, where it's compounding is a productive way of creating words in a lot of languages. It's thought to be universal. So an example of a compound in English would be smartphone. And it's a relatively recent compound. And it can be phone, it's, it's phonologically distinct from a phrase like smartphone because of the obvious shift in stress placement. So in contrast to compounding, which involves you know, two major lexical items, putting them together, creating a new lexical item, incorporation is quite a bit rarer than compounding, and it's found only in a few language families, some of them Paleo-Siberian, um, also uh, in some in, in Athabascan, um, but it, it's pretty rare. Uh, classically, comp incorporation involves putting two words together and the new word re uh, serves, as, as Gerd said, the, the combined syntactic function of both parts of it. Um, so it, it, there's an example here from, uh, from what's saying, which somehow Something happened to the resolution here. I'll just read it. Okay, so we have a, a rare doublet in Witsuitane. Uh, the word fog, ah, can be put in a phrase, ah, nain, sut, it got foggy. But you can also create an incorporated, a word with this uh, ah incorporated, nain, sut. And the ah becomes phonologically part of this, this other word. That's a, a rare doublet, but it's an example of incorporation. So incorporation is interesting because it's uh, cross-linguistically rare, and it provides another way of uh, possibly comparing the languages, both through restrictions on where incorporated roots go, and also in the uh, identity of the elements that participate in, in, um, in incorporation. So this is uh, what Jim just ended with, uh, this intriguing possibility that N in Ket and Eni or Eni, uh, something like that. And Athabascan or Cognate, sure, sure seems too coincidental to be anything but direct inheritance, um, especially when you put it together with all the other stuff that is very similar. Um, so uh, Jeff Lear in 2006 wrote a little uh, encyclopedia article which uh, contained much interesting information um, including a reconstructed um, schema for the construction of verbs in Athabascan languages. And he reconstructed a position for incorporates uh, relatively far to the left in the verb word. Um, he also gave reconstructions or, or gave, a re, uh, gave us the, the corresponding schema for EAC and Tlingit. And, um, he noted that in EAC, we don't have this incorporated position. We do have it in Tlingit, and so he reconstructed it for proto athabascan EAC Tlingit. So it's something that we want to pay attention to um, because we find some major uh, lexical content items in that slot. Um, incorporation has been compared across Athabascan languages. Uh, there was an article by Karen Rice a few years ago, and she mainly compared uh, semantic properties of incorporation in three of the languages, uh, the family that she had uh, ready access to 
data for. Uh, the Slavey data came from her own field notes. Uh, Otna data came from Jim's uh, Otna Athabascan Dictionary. And the Navajo dic uh, data came from an abundance of Navajo dictionaries. And one of the things that she uh, pointed out that is maybe not well known about Navajo is that it doesn't really have much incorporation. And in fact, in contrast to the northern languages, where there is a, <clears throat> a slot for an incorporated root, uh, Navajo doesn't have its own position within the verbal template reserved for incorporated roots. Um, so I think that's the main uh, thing. There's some, the, the possibilities of, of incorporation in Adna are greater than they are in Slavey. So there, there are more types of, uh, semant more semantic functions of incorporates are allowed in Adna than they are in Slavey. Um, so that's one way we can compare uh, the languages. Another way is just to, so, uh, so here's an example of, a, of an Atna, um incorporate the, uh, the, 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 the actually prefixed root niget, <coughs> meaning fear, um, uh, from, from Rice's paper, which you picked out of the dictionary. Um, here in the incorporate slot relatively far to the left in the, uh, the Atna word. Um, <clears throat> and uh, its fear is basically um, serving as the function, serving as the subject of this word and of this uh, sentence. Fear caused him to go out. Um, so so um, Jim asked me to, to do a little comparison of a couple of other languages which have fairly respectable inventories of uh, incorporated roots. First, the Koyukon. Uh, Koyukon is probably the best documented Athabascan, northern Athabascan language, uh, at least lexically documented, thanks to the, the work that was done by Jules Jete with many native speakers about 100 years ago, huge, you know, relatively huge native speaker population. And then uh, the recent work by um, Eliza Jones, native speaker, interpreting and adding to that. It's a wonderful resource. Um, the Wet'suwet'en is not as wonderful, but it's still pretty interesting. Um, and it's, it's, so these are from pretty, pretty uh, far <laughs> ends of the northern Athabascan geography, um, western central BC, and then uh, northern Alaska. And so another way we can compare incorporation in the languages is just through the inventories and just through basic uh, correspondences um, across across the languages. Um, no. yeah, you should check your slides on the computer that you're going to give the slideshow on. Um, so the, uh, this is the, the schema for the ordering restrictions on the leftmost prefixes in both Koyukon and Wet'suwet'en. And the um, the incorporated root in both cases is, is the position for incorporates is fairly far to the right uh, in the, uh, the leftmost group of verb prefixes, which are called the disjunct prefixes. So um, in both cases, it's, uh, where's the point? Mm -hmm. Here's the uh, little bit of red down here is the incorporated root position in Wet'suwet'en. And um, it's, uh, it's separated from, there's one thing, other thing you can put to the right of it. But anyway, the, the, uh, there, there are basically two positions where we find many different lexical items. The preverb position here and then the root position. And I, I've renamed the preverb position, the corresponding position here at Quayukon Preverb. Two fairly open classes of lexical items we find here. And they're separated by limited inventories of lexical items in both of the languages. And in the case of Wet'suwet'en, I can speak to the productivity of iterative may and negative way. And so this is a handy diagnostic for telling whether or not um, a, a prefix is in the prefer position or in the incorporated position. Um, it's, it's very easy to tell in these languages. Uh, so just a couple of examples. Here's a cognate root um, in uh, Babi Wet'suwet'en and in Koyukon. In, in Babi Wet'suwet'en, the, uh, the noun uh, chesh 
occurs as an independent root, and also in this um, uh, verb uh, where it's it's incorporated with deep uh, plural go, but here it just means to to pack on your back. Um, so the verbs that incorporated roots occur in don't necessarily uh, are not necessarily going to be comparable in terms of the uh, their semantics. Um, in this case, they're not. Here's another one that is uh, exactly cognate. Um, Hush in Babi uh, Matsudain um, occurs in Ne um, Hush East Us. Maybe so, yeah, Ne Hush East Us. It got cold at night. Um, yeah, exactly cognate with the Koyukon. And then um, over here. Uh, this is, uh, in, in both of the languages, we find some roots occurring in the incorporated position that don't occur elsewhere in the language, only occur as incorporated roots. Um, this one, uh, Hulk, I guess, Hulk, Hulk, Hulk. in Koyukon, uh, has a unique semantics, sort of like, like a toothed, palisaded object, and um, you know, it, it doesn't occur in the position where we would expect roots to occur otherwise, namely as the rightmost uh, element of a, a verb word here. It's only attested in the incorporate position. So it's something we want to, um, to look for when we're doing uh, comparisons of these languages. A uh, corresponding <laughs> example of only attested in incorporated root position would be uh, the, the uh, uh, roots A's in Babin with Sutin, which occurs, uh, I'm not sure about the semantics, but it, it just it has to do with a person you don't like or you suspect of so having done something wrong. So, would be A's Dean I, a couple speakers explained to me, is you know, somebody you don't like comes around the corner or somebody that you think did something wrong comes around the corner. But this, this uh, roots A's, we know it's in the root position because it can be preceded by those prefixes that I mentioned. Um, but it doesn't occur, doesn't otherwise occur in the normal root position in verbs or in any nouns that I'm aware of in this language. So there, there can be some interesting uh, fossilized uh, roots hidden in the incorporate position. Um, I just mentioned this uh, Babin with Sutain example. Uh, we find not only uh, root noun-like things and things that we're not sure about the category of an incorporated root position, but also things that are verbs. Uh, a couple of examples of these in Sudan, and I like the K example. Uh, this one uh, is uh, it, the, the, the root form of it, the incorporated form is K, and it seems to be the same K that occurs in the normal root position for a verb in uh, sh the semilfactive form of shoot, to shoot somebody once. Um, but it occurs in these verbs, you know, that have to do with walking around with a weapon. They wake A's display. So if you find a cooperating speaker that will give you the negative <laughs> of some of these words, then that will help you establish the position of uh, it's nice when people will give you the negative form. Um, another one that's directly cognate in both of the languages <coughs> is this interesting root that has a prefix on it. It's incorporated with a prefix. So the verb is actually analyzable as prefix plus root. And then the whole prefix plus root uh, becomes the thing that is incorporated, as in the, the Wutsuda example, Nietzsche de Leich runs around barking. So things, uh, the corporate can contain things uh, larger than roots. Another uh, pair that's the, basically the same root in both languages, although there is a little change in uh, the state of the larynx in the initial consonant, so tlo and tlo, uh, meaning laughter. Um, so this is, this is related to the uh, question of incorporated roots, but it's, it's sort of a little different in that 
Um, in addition to incorporated roots, sometimes we find roots that are not phonologically part of the verb word, but nonetheless have to occur with the verb in a uh, sentence that has a particular meaning. And those, I think, have been understudied in Athabascan languages. So we tend to pay attention to things that are strictly phonologically part of the verb word. But these uh, other elements um, that can hang out outside the verb word um, are sort of there waiting to be incorporated. And maybe this is what EAC does with these kinds of things, EAC that doesn't have the appropriate root position. Um, and then Jim wanted to come back to this one example of me. The odd says do. You want to say a little bit about well, that? Well, um, uh, yeah, just so you don't think linguistics is always boring. Me um, is do is this ah is in about uh, you can say ni ah ni ah and that ah doesn't occur anywhere else. But that is a ninth bear hunting, and you can't get it as a noun or an anywhere. I don't know where it comes from, and I've only found it in in Dunaitina, only in Dunaitina, and. And this is a very exotic country uh, with the largest sockeye uh, headwaters among any stream in the world, so that sockeye are running there until November. And so they like to do this in September and October when it, there's uh, quite a bit of darkness, and they go down there at dark and, um, and hang out. And they used to do it without firearms, too. And they'd be up on scaffolds, and they'd spear them. And that's, uh, you can read about that in Andrew Baluda's book, uh, which I mentioned earlier. So, yeah, so that's a, an example of an incorporated root that maybe will turn out to be cognate with a freestanding root. It reminds me of on. Well, maybe den, a, yeah, yeah, they say ka'un for den uh -huh. there. Yeah. Uh -huh. Just a couple things that I'd like to end with. Um, uh, I mentioned when we were looking at the uh, schema for the verb that there are really two positions within the Athabascan complex where we find root-like things. And I focused on the incorporate root position. But there's the one to the left of it. And sometimes we find, mostly we find adverbial type things like into the water or underwater or something like that or outside in that left, more left position. And sometimes we find roots there too. And in Witsute, we find uh, something that sure looks like the root incorporated form of zek inside the mouth. And it's definitely in that so-called adverbial position because it's to the left of the negative and the iterative. Um, but but it's, it's there in the adverbial position. So why is it there? And why isn't it in the proper root position? Um, and we find some Things. This is traditionally analyzed as a prefix, ta, into the water. Uh, and, but it's, and it's there in that so-called adverbial prefix position. It's there to the left of ne in this, this form, pa taneke. But it's to the right of ne in uh, a different verb, to drink water. So, you know, why do, we really should pay attention to both positions if we're going to be expanding our lexical comparison. And then um, the, the knee, actually, in uh, Witsude is, is one of the, the, the one that needs think, is one of these words that can, you know, is not really incorporated, but is hanging out outside the phonological verb, knee is split, and I'm lonely. And so there's really three, three things that we need to pay attention to, the incorporated root, the adverbial position, and then these free freestanding roots uh, hanging out outside the word.